I want this to be a really important evening. And those two people that went down are patriots, and we love them. Yes. And because of them, we ended up with some good music, right? Right? So play YMCA. Go ahead. Let's go. Nice and loud. Nobody's leaving. What's going on? There's nobody leaving. I went to the dark and guess who the street ain't got nothing to eat and the whole beast milk and welfare. See, I'm dancing like Donald Trump dances. See, this is this is all he does. He just twists. Those of you watching on Free Speech TV can see this. I'm just this is swaying just. back and forth, looking like I'm trying to knock something off an invisible table using just my belly. <laughs> he doesn't even have the energy for the double handy J's anymore. Yeah, he's and he, like, then he, now he's got this thing now where he does this kind of, I don't right. know, chef from South Park dance where with his hands like this out. And then and then Christy Nome was trying to imitate it, make, yeah, to try yes. to make it seem like it was normal. normal oh, look, right. he's doing it. Let's, uh, let's all do the chef from South Park Someone dance. Someone was saying, if you saw how she talked to him, even at the beginning of the rally, it's like I saw people talk yeah. to my mom in the nursing home. I'm telling you. I'm like, I was talking to my dad in the end. That was yes. Are, are, you, are you okay? Do you, want, do you want a bite of cake? <laughs> you remember you wanted to play that song? You know the song? Oh, my yeah, God. You know. Oh, my God, Bob. I, uh, okay. Oh, By yes. the way, Here Dana, we are. Dana Goldberg said, this is the interview yesterday. This interview with the Economic Club of Chicago yeah. feels even more damaging to Trump than the black journalist disaster. He's being embarrassed on the economy. That's supposedly his strong suit. He can't answer mm -hmm. one question. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah. What a wreck that was. I mean, oh. the whole thing that happened in Oaks, Pennsylvania, with the 30 to 40 minutes of random swaying yep. on stage where people were checking their phones and just checking, like, Mentally out, they were just done, and they were on stage, so they right. were getting bored. But then the the Bloomberg thing mm -hmm. yeah. with uh, the Economic Club, oh my God, that was such an utter disaster. Yeah. And yeah. and why he's even competitive whatsoever on the economy continues to baffle me. It's this enormous zombie myth that Republicans, well, they're just they're good at the economy, even though all the facts, all the indicators. I mean, you take out maybe some things in the 1980s. Everything I, else shows disaster whenever Republicans have to steward the economy. Yeah. And whether it's a recession, I mean, the last hundred years, every yeah. single Republican president has presided I, over a recession. But it's a fact. Google it's, it. It's yeah, true. and it's worse than that, Bob. It's not just military leaders saying he's going to blow up the world, but it, it's economists saying he's going to blow up not yeah. just our economy, the world economy. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you retweeted Associated Press. Trump's economic plans would worsen inflation, most mainstream economists say. Wall Street Journal headline, economists say inflation deficits will be higher under Trump than Harris, which were just the simple questions that... Yeah. This guy asked him that Maria Bartiromo, Maria Bartiromo <laughs> is a Trump psychophant, and he can't, yeah. he's losing it. He just he, can't. he really is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every day there's a new story that comes out where a whole bunch of economists say, "Hey, no, they're just flagging people away. You're, you're thinking about voting for Donald Trump because of the economy and because of the price of grocery, as Donald Trump calls it. Mm -hmm. I'm so concerned about grocery. I often go and, out and, and buy it, a single grocery, and I can't right. believe, and I every believe time, how expensive. You know, Every day, people are leaning in that direction, and the economists, every single reputable economist yeah. in this country is like, no, yeah. oh my God, no, massive recession, massive inflation. I mean, Donald Trump is talking about a 2,000 percent tariff. Right, he's like a 2,000 percent. I don't know. I, I mean, I say 200 percent. Two half thousand, I'm going to be a 1,000 percent. He has no idea what he's talking about. 11 billion percent. Yeah, he's going to... He's going to start just throwing out just random right. gigantic numbers for his tariffs. Bob, and he's still insisting that these are taxes on foreign governments. It's Bob, ridiculous. I just was saying yesterday, inflation, I don't know, you know, you know this, but it has it, it's that it's the same level as before the pandemic now. So now yeah. what's your excuse for voting for a fascist rapist? Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Right. Well, it's yeah. It, what a lot of people forget also that prices under Donald Trump were uh, higher than they were under Barack Obama. Right. Prices under Barack Obama were higher than they were under George W. Bush. Right. It's just the way inflation works. That's the whole definition of the term. It's the rate at which prices increase year over year. Yeah. And so I, I think the this mistaken notion that Donald Trump is somehow going to return us to the prices of 2018 and 2019 yeah. is absolutely absurd. And that's actually quite destructive. Uh, deflation 
if deflation happens, we've got much bigger problems with the economy right. yeah. than the price of oh. grocery. Did you yeah. hear Donald Trump <laughs> said yesterday he's going to uh, deflete in- inflation? He's yeah, deflete, he's going to deflete. Know. Yeah, he's like deflete. he's thinking of his enema when he takes it out. He's defleeting. <laughs> That's right. Mm-hmm. He's going to deflete, deflete inflation. Infl- oh, God. Oh, you oh, also God. retweeted. The, the poorly uh, educated just eat it up, don't yeah. you? Oh, yeah. Yes, they do. Yeah, you retweeted uh, Trump saying, we have Assurians in our room. Yeah. Is that how you pronounce I don't know it? What that Assurians is. in our room. We have some incredible people in our room. We have so many, but we just can't. But we have some people. We have some people. Wow, he's turning into Sybil from right the people and the people and the mm-hmm. the crowd yeah. and the green it, kitchen and the green kitchen. Okay. I mean, what are Assurians? Just, what did he even mean? Okay, know. we don't know. Yeah, he's extraordinarily know. declining at yeah. this point, and wow, uh, it it seems like. The and this was in the uh, the Apprentice movie that, I, yeah. that we watched over the weekend. Yeah, the Donald Trump movie, uh, where he just in the movie he's just sucking down the uh, amphetamines, just uh, the prescription amphetamines. No, Kessler's been doctor, talking about it for years. Yeah, yeah. And my favorite scene is when he's at the doctor's office, and I, presumably Doctor Bornstein's office, and, and whoever the doctor is looking at the amphetamines and go, yeah, these are amphetamines, and Donald's going. I, I wait a second. I thought they were just vitamins. Oh, you God. idiots! You oh, nitwit! Please. Prescription vitamins? What are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, um, so that—that's. I mean, that has completely addled him. I, along it does. With so it many feels other like. Yeah, yeah, it feels like the October surprise that you're like, oh my God! <laughs> yeah. I've never. We've never seen this where he's canceled every interview, won't debate, no medical records, and he's clearly. You don't need to be a doctor. You just need to watch right. him. I mean, I love that Kamala Harris is playing clips from his rally and her rallies. <laughs> It's oh, yeah, like, yeah. Well, now here. it's gotten to the point where he's thrown out any pretense of being somewhat uh, sane or somewhat d- tethered to democracy. My God, he's talking about using the military, yeah. uh, in, in particular the National Guard, yeah. I guess, to arrest anyone who is mean to him on Twitter, I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But, I mean, we've heard about this as part <clears throat> of Project 2025, where he's going to use the military to arrest peaceful protesters. And yeah. so that is already established in that document. And so Donald Trump is just going to go one step further and, and just go after all the radical left Democrats. As and we had them. another general come out yesterday. And by the way, that is so against their code. Yes, it, is. <laughs> yeah. it, it takes yeah. a lot for generals to come out. And, you know, it is just not in their, you know, mindset. You know, right. Uh, but I, I, by, speaking of which, according to Woodward in his new book, Now a Warning. Uh, he's Joe Biden. You tweeted this. Joe Biden stopped Putin from using battlefield nukes in Ukraine. I wonder how many yep. Cuban missile crisis tests Biden has passed with utter competence and expertise. Too bad White House reporters were more concerned with his gait and his raspy voice. I mean, I, I, mm-hmm. well, the centerpiece of this Woodward book uh, is and think of how what Trump would have done. Competent. Mm-hmm. The, the, yeah. I mean, the, the, the Biden administration is completely competent. It's loaded with expertise. The, the number of disasters they have managed to avert is incredible. And I think the centerpiece of that is this full court press that was orchestrated by the Joe Biden White House to stop Vladimir Putin from using battlefield nukes. I mean, they even got Xi Jinping in on the uh, sp- uh, strategy to try to talk Putin out of doing this. I yeah. mean, President Xi from China was helping the White House to stop Vladimir Putin from using nuclear weapons against Ukraine yeah. when things started to go badly for Russia. And now we're at a place where the Ukrainian army is actually holding something like 90 Russian villages. I mean, so the war has gone so well for Ukraine, they're actually expanding into Russian territory, yeah. presumably temporarily until the war res- resides. But this is an indication of how well things have been going for Ukraine, generally speaking, against Russia, given the fact that Vladimir Putin is completely unhinged. And what we know is that if Donald Trump were to become president, all of that would be off yeah. the table. Yeah. It would be. Oh, God. Yeah, I don't because, even want to. I seriously, yeah. I realize that I am blocking the actual possibility of this happening because it's too awful to contemplate. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. By the way, you retweeted Chris Evans, uh, who said people who keep being surprised or confused why the election remains close, no matter who the Democratic candidate is or what kind of campaign they run, don't understand what it is about the current Republican Party that appeals to its voters. It's grievance and resentment. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. I, 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 but I don't know, Bob. I heard you know interviews yesterday with Georgia, a Georgia voter bunch of Georgia voters, but, you know, where we had huge victories yesterday. And she just said, well, to me, it's just sanity versus insanity. Right. And I think that's starting to break through all this (laughs) 
Trump just being completely out of his effing mind. Yeah, I, I really hope so, because I think if the possibility of Donald Trump becoming president again is too terrible to even begin to contemplate yeah. The, yeah. the effects of this. It will be world changing. And going back to what I was saying about Putin and battlefield nukes, that was one of the things in Bob Woodward's book, is that this would be world-changing. The use of nuclear weapons tactically oh, yeah. on a battlefield. Oh, yeah. He would, would have been like, do it, Putin. Irreparably. Do it, yeah. Putin. Hey, Melania, come in and watch this. They're I gonna, think we're going to nuke right. Ukraine off the map. Come here. I think she understood <laughs> yeah. wind patterns, that if it blows in Ukraine, it heads he to China understand. really quickly. He doesn't well, understand. Imagine if Putin wind. nuked Chernobyl. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. That'd be like, him. imagine Chernobyl is in Ukraine. Yes. And imagine oh, battlefield go. nukes used on Chernobyl mm -hmm. to that effect. Oh, it my God. wouldn't take a, a big nuke to completely turn that into an even worse disaster area than it already is. And so that's just one example of the instability that Donald Trump would manifest around the world. I mean, if another pandemic happened, I mean, we're talking about yeah. just. I mean, at the very lowest end of the ladder, we're talking about massive economic calamity, mm -hmm. huge yeah. inflation, a recession, yeah. and then internationally, Putin taking over Ukraine and then turning his sights onto other NATO nations it, it, and invading those with Donald Trump's and we invitation. And will, we will have another pandemic because we, do, you know, and yeah. now with all the anti-vax stupidity that he has pumped into the body politic, I mean, the, it, you're right, Bob, it would be gasoline meet match. That's what yeah, a second yeah. term well, The thing I've been talking you, about on my show is how we need to, as, as American voters, we need to prioritize competence and stability. Competence and stability in our leadership. And we've lost sight of this. It's dropped to like number, you know, a thousand on the list of priorities for how we vote. But we have to look at our candidates and choose which one is going to be uh, the most competent I, yes. and which one is going to be the most I stable. Hope, I think the That's exhaustion the, is yeah. real, Bob. I think people are done with the chaos. They're exhausted yeah, by I, him. I really, um, really hope so. But yeah. you, just to your point, too, about whether it's COVID or whatever, you said the memory hole is real. Even Sunday show anchors with solid reputations don't remember. Yes, Donald Trump ordered Jeff Sessions to appoint mm -hmm. a U.S. attorney to investigate Hillary Clinton, which he did. The investigator mm -hmm. was John Huber, and he found nothing illegal. I mean, it's just, I, I, oh, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't prosecute my enemy. And you're like, oh, my God. It, yeah, it just yeah. happened. And and yeah. this, you said, when will Chicken Donald sit down with NBC News or CNN or 60 Minutes or any platform that isn't actively campaigning for him? He won't because he's chicken and he's hiding his worsening mental decline. Mm -hmm. I mean, and today is the day Kamala Harris sits down with Fox News, right? Right. Yep, yep. And if it goes as well as her appearance with Charlemagne the God and, right. and some of these other uh, podcasters, I think... It's going to be another gigantic coup for her. And remember, when it comes to going on Fox News Channel, first of all, she's got Pete Buttigieg in her corner. Pete Buttigieg, yeah. he's an expert at going on Fox News Channel. I think yeah. it's a great idea because all you got to do, you don't have to convince all of the Fox News viewers. You only have to convince two mm -hmm. or three percent of them. And that's a, a pretty I think I'm more, I'm more with Rude Pundit on this. <laughs> Not, what to stay uh, away from? Not, I think it's a good idea. I think it's a great idea. I'm with I'm with Chris on I this. Have, I, I have every it's... confidence in her. I just Fox News yeah. is just a but it's just, I mean, it's a matter lying of cesspool and, of poison. Again, there are gettable people, there I are. think, on Fox News that I think if she just with just the right convincing, I think they could swing over yeah. in her direction. I think there I think a lot of people are looking for an excuse to vote against Donald Trump. Yeah. They just don't know enough people who watch Fox News don't yeah. know anything about her. Exactly. Well, to your, to your point, you repeat you retweeted uh, Mark Hughes on the, you know, bedfellows. We They're not just strange bedfellows. They are, you know, in some cases, vomitous war criminal bedfellows. Right. But anyway, you True. said. <laughs> I get why some folks refuse to retweet, give credit to anti-Trump statements from conservatives like Geraldo for who year, for years enabled Trump and right-wingism. But we face a do-or-die moment where civilization tactically and strategically anything and any ally against Nazis helps make, make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to wake up with these people. <laughs> November yeah. 6th, but but yeah, I mean, it's it's. I just saw another boat parade with the Nazi flags. Yeah. I'm like, mm -hmm. is this is this hard, America? Vote for the side without the Nazi flags. Yeah, I mean, that's right? what I think about sometimes when I pull onto I-270 here in the D.C. area, and I'm in you know horrendous you know 75 mile an hour traffic. I'm like, well, half of these people have fallen prey to a, a well known and obvious con man. That makes me feel a lot better about being in traffic with them. You know what I mean? It's just like, oh, God, the judgment of half of the American voting population is completely out the window. And 
Like, oh my God. Yes, let's get it. Let's get into a 2,000 pound bullet with other people in their 2,000 pound bullets and see how this goes with their crappy judgment. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. I hope you'll join me on my new audio podcast, Justice Matters. I'll be using my 30 years as a federal prosecutor and Army JAG to unpack, break down, and explain the legal issues of the day, particularly where the legal intersects with the political. Please look for Justice Matters with Glenn Kirshner wherever you generally get your podcasts.